Hello everybody, welcome to my second part of rock cut churches in Lalibela city of Amhara region in Ethiopia. These five rock cut churches in the northern region carved into volcanic turf is simply mind boggling. Although mainstream maintains that they are approximately eight to nine hundred years old, there is actually no evidence to support that. House of the Cross is believed to have been carved into the bedrock during the Kingdom of Aksum. If that is true, this monolithic church will be more than a thousand years old. The Ten Arches represents Ten Commandments. However, this particular swastika design is very interesting to me. This symbol of Buddhism in Ethiopian church is completely out of place. A tunnel at the southern end of the House of Mariam courtyard leads to the interconnected churches of Golgotha and Michael, which together with the tomb of Jesus and the tomb of Adam form the most mysterious complex in Lalibela. Also, there are three unmovable blocks like packed to the base. Notice also the three niches on the wall that are no different from those found in Petra or India. House of Mary is a massive project. The amount of bedrock removed doesn't seem to justify the size of the building. According to legend, this is the first church to be carved into the bedrock. This is the only church with three porches. House of Mary has three water tanks. They are said to be baptismal pool. However, I have plenty of reasons to believe that they were not carved as pools. If they are baptismal pools, why do they need three pools? Even a large church today has only one small pool. The water will turn bad quickly and useless for baptism. In reality, these rectangular holes can be found all over megalithic culture. The mysterious megalithic sites of Petra in Jordan, Nanigat in India, Peinan in Taiwan, and Sumba Island in Indonesia have rectangular holes and they are definitely not baptismal pool. The gear track mark is another smoking gun. You can find them all over the world in mysterious megalithic sites. They appear randomly with no purpose and just like those around the world, for example, in Jogeshwari in India and Mokau in China. Another food for thought is the swastika symbol. How did Lalibela receive information and help from angels that ended up with Buddhist symbol is a mystery. The House of Mary also contains a pillar on which it is said Lalibela carved the reason behind the church's construction. It is believed to be a message Lalibela received from the Archangel Michael. Today, the pillar is always behind a veil and no one knows what lies beyond the shroud. I am not sure how this cave is called a church. House of Virgin is just a rock cut cave. This cave church has no windows and is roughly carved out. Evidence on the rock could prove that the church was carved few thousand years before Africans used it as a church. In the 4th century, 50 nuns were murdered by Emperor Julian, the apostate from Edessa. This church is simply dedicated to them in their memory. House of the Saviour of the World is definitely the largest monument here. The amount of bedrock carved out is insane. Based on the size, this is the largest monolithic rock cut church in the world. There are 34 columns on the outside and 16 gigantic pillars on the inside. After carving from top to bottom, ancient builders have to chisel their way inside. Even mainstream archaeologists doubt the ability to complete within such a short period of time. Based on this simple diagram with scale, I can see that a length of 45 meters, width of 40 meters and depth of 12 meters is required to carve the church out of the bedrock. That means 21,600 cubic meters have been chiseled out. Since the monument was hollowed out into a church, I'm going to assume a 20,000 cubic meters bedrock was removed. At 1.95 ton per cubic meter density of volcanic turf, 39,000 tons of rubble has to be managed just for this church. If you construct a large hall for gathering, you always want a front stage for speaker and attendees are seated where they can have good view of the front. 
However, Medani Alam is full of gigantic pillars, you can barely see the front. To hack the bedrock with ancient chisel is already extremely hard. The Ethiopian carved the inside with 16 enormous pillars. If this was meant to be a church, then this is not a good design as all the pillars are actually blocking the priest. This is definitely not a design for a large congregation to listen to someone in front. While most people are amazed by the size of the project, I am amazed by the double gear tracks similar to those in Petra in Jordan and Mighty Shan in China. Another post-construction clue is the protrusion you can find in all megalithic sites around the world. They tend to be square in dimension. From Peru to Taiwan to Ethiopia, these megalithic sites were left by the same unknown ancient builders. Well, that's all for today. Thank you for watching my presentation on the northern group of Lalibela rock-cut churches in Ethiopia. See you next time. Denenahu.